Why? First things first, what is coin shot? Simply put, it's a type of craftable 12 gauge ammo for certain shotguns that is made from legionary. I'll be blunt, I have never once used it before, as I wasn't even aware of its existence until recently. But from what I've gathered from the wiki, it's essentially just another version of the Magnum Buckshot rounds, with the major difference being it can be sold for a lot more caps. So of course, that means today we are restricted to this ammo type from start to finish. Unlike other craftable shotgun ammo, nobody sells coin shot, so I must make it myself. That shouldn't be too big of an issue, but because I hate myself, I have also decided to make things just a little bit more interesting. The fastest way to get the coins needed for the ammo would be of course to just kill Legion soldiers, as all of them carry the right coins. Well, I've decided today I will be siding with the Legion, and therefore I will have to get the coins by some other means, as blowing a hole in your ally's face is a very quick way to lose friendship with them. Anything else I'll go over during the run, so with all that out of the way, let's begin. Good name out the bat, and it's time to assign my stats. I just went with a focus on luck and intelligence. Considering every shotgun pellet, or coin in this case, has a chance to crit, it seemed like a good idea. Plus, I can see some gambling in my future, although maybe not as much as you might think. For tag skills, I of course take guns, want to do as much damage as possible after all, and then I took repair and barter. Barter may seem like an odd choice, seeing how I mentioned you cannot purchase the ammo. While that is true, other than just the coins, I will need the other basic materials for crafting shotgun ammunition, so getting better prices for 12 gauge rounds would be ideal. Finally for traits, I just take my usual, that being skilled and wild wasteland. While getting an appropriate weapon would of course be very much ideal, I figured it'd be kind of pointless without the ammo, so my first port of call was to craft some coin shot. I started by breaking down all of the ammo I had on my person, and then began running for Camp McCarran. I made sure to grab the snow globe in the cemetery on the way, the more of these I can get the better, as it will be less time spent gambling. On the bright side, that hauled out rock run from a few weeks ago will now actually be useful for something, because as I found out in that, 12 gauge ammo has a chance to spawn inside the rocks. Granted, it's not a lot, but it might come in handy at some stage. I mark some important locations for later, and on my way through the shortcut, make a point to take the NCR uniform from the Eternal Snoozing Tripper. I won't need it to board the monorail, but seeing how I'm joining the Legion, an NCR disguise could probably come in handy. Rather than head straight to McCarran, I make a slight detour to the 180 at trading post. With a gun skill over 40, I can begin trading with Alexander, who I know for a fact sells a good chunk of 12 gauge ammo. This time he has 62 shells up for grabs, naturally I take and dismantle them all, as that's a potential 62 coin shots right there. I have made shotgun builds before in my free time, as I do still play these games casually believe it or not, so I am aware that anything over 200 shells will more than likely be enough to see me through a sizable portion of the game. Anyway, back on track I get to the base where I can then just take a leisurely stroll to the monorail, as nobody is standing guard, so from there I can just make my way to the tops. I only chose the tops as my first casino, simply because staring at Benny levels me up quite a few times. All my points are going into guns right away until it's maxed out. Realistically, the harder I hit, the less ammo I should have to craft. Speaking of, let's talk about coins. Specifically, the Legion Denarius. So, we all know when you turn in your chips at the casino, you can ask to be paid in Legion money. Naturally, you would assume that would make the process of collecting money for the coin shot a quick and easy procedure. Right? The answer is yes. And no. For every 100 chips you turn in, you'll be given an Aureus, as it is the equivalent of 100 caps. Problem is, only the Denarius can be used for the coin shot. This means at most we can turn over 99 chips at a time for a total of 24 denarii. You need 8 denarii per shot, so for 99 chips, we get 3 coin shots. This is of course not anywhere near enough, so what this means is I must spend the next god knows how long dropping stacks of 99 chips and then trading them in one at a time until I'm satisfied that I will have enough ammo to get by. I often get asked why I sometimes gloss over huge parts of the run. This is normally the reason why. It's a lot of monotony in between the parts that I talk about. I mean, you can see the process going on in the background while I explain this, right? It's not fun. On the bright side, I don't necessarily need to gamble to get the coins. I can simply just make money by selling weapons and armor to vendors, and then trade in the caps for chips, and then trade those chips in for coins. That is the reason why I made sure to grab that snow globe earlier. 
By the time I'm done with this trip, because trust me this won't be the last, I have 710 denarii. With the help of Mick and some more 12 gauge shells, I managed to craft 88 shells of coin shot. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Regardless, it's better than nothing, so now all that's left is to find a shotgun, and we're good to go. Fortunately, I actually have one in mind. Now I know I could use a riot or sawn off shotgun, hell I can make a quick trip to Novak and get the big boomer from old lady Gibson, but no. My personal favourite shotgun in the game is the hunting shotgun, so given that the choice of weapon falls on me, I'm going to go with that. There is just something inherently much more satisfying about it when compared to the others. It's probably because of the pump action. Buying one is of course out of the picture at my current level, but not to worry, there is one at the Horitzer farmstead, just a little bit north of Westside. The place may be filled with vipers, but the shotgun itself is conveniently away from all of them in the bed of this pickup truck. It's in pretty poor condition, but let's not pretend like weapon repair kits are not a thing, so it shouldn't be an issue for very long. Against the first handful of vipers that come my way, it does about as much damage as I would expect it to given its mangled state. As for the coin shot, well, as of right now I don't really notice any major difference over the regular 12 gauge shells, other than the chance of recovering some of the coins from the bodies of my victims. Not all the coins are usable by the way, some of them end up completely mangled, but I suppose getting even a little bit of ammo back every now and then wouldn't be all that bad. Now I could just return to the tops and start a bloodbathing session with Benny and the boys, but let's just cool our jets for a moment and take things a bit slower. I didn't want to rush straight to the end of things as I'd only just begun, so it was back to Good Springs and time to start following the road as if it was my first ever playthrough. As you might expect, powder gangers and whatever flavour of convict that attempts to stand in our way get a little richer if you catch my meaning. Clearing out Prim was certainly more violent than usual. I don't think most of them were expecting their brains to become wall decorations today, but yet, here we are. Beagle asks to be put in his place and continue to be number two, so I oblige and make Prim Slim and his wonderful sense of shoes in charge of the town. If I was smart, I would stop wasting the apple on such small encounters, and yet here I am exterminating rad scorpions for no reason and then some ants for arguably even less reason. Especially when you consider the NCR will be my enemies today. That said, remaining on their good side is not the worst idea for now. Weapon repair kits are good and all, but being sweet on a man with a maxed out repair skill is even better. All my adventures at the outpost push me to level 6 and just like that, the shotgun has gotten a significant boost in damage. At level 6 we have access to Shotgun Surgeon. This makes it so all shotguns ignore an additional 10 points of a target's damage threshold. This, when combined with another perk we'll be picking up in a few levels, makes shotguns absolutely broken. I feel like that's something I say all the time when talking about builds in New Vegas. It's just super easy to become overpowered even early on. Following the path further and the jackals don't fare much better than their viper counterparts. I'm beginning to run low on ammo however, so I will inevitably be heading back to the casino soon. Not to worry, I still had more than enough weaponized currency for the really important kills. I stay my hand and don't blow Volbeis and his men into next week, but instead hit up Gamora, and for once I mean that figuratively. I'll be back to purge them later on once they have outlived their usefulness to me. I spent a little longer in the cycle of hell this time and came out with 119 death coins. I also returned to the 188 to get the choke modification for my hunting shotgun to decrease its spread by 40%. Never was able to find the capacity upgrade unfortunately. I decided to test it out right away on some unsuspecting bark scorpions and centaurs. The centaurs are always a fine way to get some early experience, seeing how they barely put up a fight. The hollow tape from the Brotherhood soldiers is also handy to have for whenever I decide to bring commerce to the cave dwellers. Before we head underground we must ascend to the heavens, which is an overdramatic way of saying I proceed up Black Mountain so that I may finish Crazy Cubed by way of Close Quarters Brain Extraction. On a quest and power high I return to Good Springs to make short work of Joe Cobb's gang. Um. Very short work of Joe Cobb's gang. Despite getting the full assistance of the town, this one man bank was more than enough to decimate the tax dodgers intent on overthrowing the town. Oddly enough, now it wasn't the coins that were becoming an issue, I could get them easy enough, it was just a brain dead task would have me wishing I was doing anything else, but instead it was the 12 gauge hulls that were becoming very rare. Of course the easiest way to get them is buying 12 gauge rounds from vendors, but even when I waited for them to stock up they always seemed to come back in such small amounts. The Vendatron, Alexander, Blake and Mick were my main sources for them if you're curious. I know the Great Can's armory would have been a good idea, but I don't really like the cans and they're all the way over to the west and I didn't want to jog over there today. 
Speaking of not liking the cans, I take that animosity, put it in the barrel of my gun, and start blasting through the streets of Boulder City. Caesar may not be best pleased about me killing his cannon fodder, but they drop 10mm submachine guns, which sell for way more than they should if I'm honest, and as such, will be turned into some useful silver coins momentarily. I make a brief detour to Hoover Dam, not to butter up Barden for ammo, I don't have the speech for that, but rather to grab a set of Chinese stealth armour. No build is better than the shotgun Chinese stealth cowboy, or sk sk for short. For some reason, I keep reading shotgun Chinese stealth cowboy as if it was the tune to the 1987 TMNT theme. Moving on, I helped the boomers for a bit here. Couldn't see it through as I was just under the repair skill to fix the solar panels. I did do all of their other stuff though, like dealing with the ants, being a friend to Pete, and helping Jack with his crimson caravan problems. No, I'm not saying it again, I said it once in the Easy Pete video, and that was more than enough. More money, mishaps and mayhem before moseying my way over to Novak, I was still searching for the high capacity mod at this stage, and thought maybe Cliff would have it. He didn't, so my time spent in the town was short and meaningless, that said the journey there was not, as the vipers I shotgunned on the way into town were kind enough to pass over enough of their life essence to help me reach level 10, allowing me to not only get a high enough repair skill to fix up those last solar panels, and by proxy, finish the boomer's questline. Even better, however, is at level 10, I take the Radchild perk, which, when at 800 plus rads, will allow me to get back 8 HP per second. That was difficult to say for some reason. The prospect of that healing was so good that I made sure to go and nearly gullify myself right away. With the coins in my inventory and a few more shopping trips, I'm able to get 225 coin shot shells. But I wanted more, and every one of my usual vendors was out for the next 3 to 5 days. Now I could just do the very smart thing and just wait around for those next few days to repeat the process, or I could hit up another trader who is known to carry at least 212 gauge rounds upon your very first visit. I am of course talking about everyone's favourite bandage buddy, Joshua Gramcracker. I figured I haven't gone through Honest Hearts in a while, plus it's a pretty short DLC. I was smart enough to travel light, in more ways than one I might add, so I don't have to drop anything before the trip. As usual, the caravan company, Jed and all, are dead and all before you know it. Fortunately, the White Legs were kind enough to come far enough down the mountainside so that they would be within shotgun range, which is very appreciated. This is also where I really made note of just how effective shotgun surgeon would be. I don't think a single member of the White Legs wears anything above light armour, so I am going to be tearing through them with very little effort. Don't be surprised if I do not spend a lot of time talking about the DLC. Other than the occasional Yagwai, the wildlife mainly consists of rat scorpions, geckos and wild dogs. I think Cazadors are also present here, but to jump the gun a bit, I never saw one during my entire stay in Zion. Granted, I was only here for an hour, so that would make sense. When I make it to the disgruntled roll of toilet paper, I mash through his dialogue to get straight to the trading. He does have some other good items on sale, but of course, my eyes are fixated on the 212 gauge shells. At 3 caps apiece, that only comes to 600 caps total which is much cheaper than I thought it was going to be. I don't have the coins to craft the ammo now even if I can break them down, but this just gives me something to look forward to when I return to the Mojave. I do so love picking chips off the floor for 40 minutes at a time after all. Now I like this DLC, I think it's pretty fun, but the main quest objectives are beyond basic. First up we gotta make it to this destroyed bus and repair an old compass. Boom, just like that, 248 XP. After having an embarrassing 3 shot kill on this baby gecko, I ran to the nearby fishing lodge to continue my crimes against his people. 3 shots, 3 kills helps to make me feel better as I unlock the nearby cabinet to grab 2 walkie talkies for another easy 248 XP. This is why I like this DLC, simple tasks, sure, but damn if it isn't a really good way to par level quickly. My travels from quest to quest were rather uneventful, but this triggered a core memory and made me giggle. Good. My final tasks for Crispy are to sterilise some medical equipment and go back to school shopping for some lunchboxes. Luckily, I remember doing this with my own parents near the end of the summer holidays many moons ago, and I know being overly aggressive is exactly how you get the last Thomas the Tank Engine lunch bag. With the scorpions eradicated and the lunchables secured, I levelled up and took the final shotgun perk that would be needed to break this build. And its name is... and stay back. For those of you unfamiliar, you know the Super Slam perk that I take in every single one of my melee weapon videos? The one that repeatedly knocks an enemy over? The absolutely broken one? Well, this is that, 
but for shotguns. Yes, it's ridiculous, and I love it. After this, I meet up with Daniel, quest giver number two for the DLC, and it's a few more bite-sized objectives. It ranges from grabbing items from a little shop of horrors cave to butchering more white legs and disarming bear traps on a bridge. All in all, not much to go over here. There was one objective where I got to decide whether I wanted to play Capture the Flag or Deathmatch. Naturally, I chose the latter. When all's said and done, it's on to the final decision. Do I want the tribes to evacuate, or do I want them to stand their ground and fight? Well, either way, it's pretty much the same outcome in terms of gameplay, so I went with evacuation for one reason and one reason only. Even if you don't stay and fight like he wants, Bandages is still here to back you up, and the DLC still ends with a fight against the leader of the White Legs. I did make sure to do all the optional objectives for this final mission, such as clearing the bridge, again, and freeing the slaves. Don't say it. Don't say it! Josh makes all of this go by much faster than it already was. His 45 pistol does an insane amount of damage, not to mention it's like he's using Deadeye with the thing considering how accurate he is. I do deal with salt upon wounds myself however, and stay back proved to be just as busted as I thought, seeing how he spent the entire fight lying down. Once the fight is won, the DLC is done, and for some baffling reason, I get all of their clothes. I'm not complaining mind you, Joshua's armour and Salt Upon Wound's helmet are just overall better pieces of armour with greater effects than my current gear. Back to the Mojave, I spent some time obtaining more coins in the tops. Things would have gone a lot faster if I didn't have to leave halfway through due to accidentally stealing a pencil, causing the cashier to almost lose her goddamn mind. It required some fast travelling and waiting to resolve, then all I had to do was manually push her back upstairs as she was now waiting by the entrance, unable to move on her own. By the time I'm finished, I have 266 coin shots. That should be more than enough for the foreseeable future. It was so much, in fact, I thought it was only fitting to put that money to good use and fund some of the casinos. As I am already here, the tops was the first to go. It's going to be like this for all three of them, because let's be real, they never stood a chance. It's funnier here, because I'm of course doing this to get to Benny, but despite how much carnage I cause, he just continues to chill in his usual spot. I mean, it works for me, and before you know it, he has become paint for the walls. The white gloves were next, and, well, yeah, fancy cane plus suit divided by shotgun equals an angry Caesar later, but that doesn't bother me now, as it won't have any lasting repercussions. Finally, of course, is the Omertas. This one is actually somewhat beneficial, as a lot of the ones in the back drop 12 gauge ammo, so that'll be good for when I need to craft more ammo later. It may seem like I am shooting myself in the foot here, because after all, I do still need the casinos to supply me with coins if I want to keep going. This is true, but let's not forget the Atomic Wrangler also lets you gambo. Oh, gambo. <laughs> gambo first bet. <laughs> this is true, but let's not forget the Atomic Wrangler also lets you gamble, so it will be my new counterfeit coin factory from here on out. With them out of the way, all I have to deal with on the strip is house. I inform Mr. House I will be keeping the Platinum Chip. I do make sure to compensate him for his troubles though. With that transaction completed, it's about time I finally met the man I'll be swearing my allegiance to, seeing how his currency has funded this entire run. He of course sends me down into the bunker and like a good little soldier I do his bidding, making short work of the turrets and protectrons, along with the generators, so the army can go kablamo. Seizure Caesar compliments me on some jobs well done, before sending me to deal with the Brotherhood. As per usual in runs like these, the Brotherhood can prove to be the biggest hurdle. Although, I made sure to take some precautions such as Psycho, Medex and Yagwai meat that I brought back from Zion that somehow provides 10% damage. Body shots while able to knock down the Tin Men were not really viable. Specifically headshots and that's however, well, those were almost always guaranteed one shots. It's just a shame I cannot show most of them because YouTube still seems to mistake 2010 video game human jam as real world violence. Remember to pour one out for your Mortal Kombat content creators that have been struggling with this for years. The hardest part about dealing with the Brotherhood is honestly just getting through the front door. Once you've mastered that, they begin to fall like domino. It's easy enough to avoid most of them on the first floor, and then once you make it to the bottom level, congrats, you're basically home free, as other than Harden, only two people down here are wearing power armour. The rest are all in recon armour and scribe robes, meaning it's time for Shotgun Surgeon to really start popping off. 
After I take out the big three, that being McNamara, Harden and Taggart, I can activate the self-destruct, blow away a few more scribes, and then be on my merry way back to the fort to continue my tasks for Salad Boy. At this stage he recruits me as his personal doctor, which really means I go to the New Vegas clinic and buy some overly expensive tools, all so I can just abuse my luck stat instead. He's so proud of my performance that he offers me a job of assassinating Kimball, and I of course accept and get to work. Now, there are many ways you can go about this. Take out the sniper and get an advantageous view of the speech, rig the vertebrae to explode, rig the AA gun to explode, or even rig the NCR private to explode. So, how did I go about this? Sometimes the easiest solutions are the simplest ones. For good measure, I take out everybody else in attendance. With no witnesses, maybe they won't even realise that their president is dead. It matters little to me as it's now time for the final battle. I went and stocked up on more ammo before the end, but I feel like that's rather obvious. Blasting my way across and through the dam is so much fun that I could honestly do it twice. Well, thanks to the New Vegas special, I get to do just that. When I make it to Oliver's compound, I thought it was going to be a bit more complicated, what with the traps, rangers and the heavies. But not really. The rangers, much like the Brotherhood, don't have a lot in the way of head protection, so some wealthiest VATS attacks puts them down for good. I get comments every now and then asking why I don't side with the Legion more often, and it's really just down to this final fight. I feel like Oliver is nowhere even close to as difficult as Legatlanius. Case in point, look how fast he goes down here. One shot sweeps him off his feet, and another takes them right off. As for the heavy troopers? Well, have you ever played Zombies and Cod? It's kinda like that. Just create a train and run around the square taking shots at them until the last one stops moving. To be fair, this may have been a bit more difficult if I didn't go in with Max Radchild in effect. The final heavy retreated down to the second floor where their own traps did most of the work for me. With the final soldier down, I returned to the Legate, finishing the game and proving of course you can beat Fallout New Vegas with the coin shot. I don't think it was ever a question of whether this was doable or not, people just really wanted to see me use the coin shot for whatever reason. Again, if you know why that is, please leave a comment. Some people said it's because Josh Sawyer, the director of New Vegas, tweeted about it a while ago. I mean, that could be it, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not complaining at the end of the day, I really like the hunting shotgun in New Vegas, so it was very fun to just essentially record a casual playthrough where I got to use it. Regardless, that's going to be the next challenge video from Joe Sock and second video. I like you interested in more challenges in the future. Feel free to subscribe to our videos every week. My name is Norbert. Stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video.